Hello again, everybody. I'm Snapper Lancaster, welcoming you to another edition of the Central Alabama High School Sports Show. Once again, I want to remind you, you can catch our sports show on the internet at castvshow.com and, of course, like us on Facebook. This time of year, it gets awfully busy for high school sports, and the two sports in particular that get the busiest are volleyball and football. As a matter of fact, the volleyball playoff started last night here in the Birmingham area. Some 6A uh, teams were in it from the Birmingham area. Hoover advanced and Mountain Brook advanced, and tonight there will be the 4A, 5A, and 3A uh, start their uh, uh, first round of the playoffs. Then, of course, football season is going on hot and heavy. And let me tell you, there's some interesting things happening. First of all, um, in the rankings, we still have some, a lot of teams in the Birmingham area that are doing well in that. Like in 7A, Hoover is ranked number one, Oak Mountain number six. In 6A, Spanish Fort is number one, Clay Chalkman number two. Uh, Shades Valley have an outstanding season number three. And McAdory, David Powell's Yellow Jackets are number eight. In 5A, St. Paul's is number one, but Parker's number three, Mortimer Jordan number eight, and Ramsey number nine. And then, of course, in Class 4A, uh, the number one team is UMS Wright. But for most of the season, it's been the league's Green Wave. They lost for the first time uh, a week or so ago. Now they are ranked fourth, but you know, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the playoffs. As a matter of fact, we've got two great coaches on our program tonight. One of them happens to be the Leeds coach. The other, the um, Mountain Brook Spartans. And of course, we're talking about Chris Yeager. So great uh, show ahead of us. Look forward to the coaches and the athletes. We'll get started in just a moment. Don't you go away. The community features a world-class resort and spa. The amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course. Miles of historic trails. And the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, are we going to have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. Land of Frost Premium is America's best-selling one-pound daily pouch. Now available in 12 delicious flavors, including new flavors of muskeet, turkey, and cotto salami. High school athletes across the country ask for Land of Frost by name. These great items are available at your local grocer, including Piggly Wiggly, Food Giant, Western Supermarkets, and many more. Land of Frost also makes other varieties of lunch meats, including daily shaved bristro and sub sandwich kits. Land of Frost is a proud sponsor of youth sports as well. Good driver discount, multi-car discount, good student discount. Helping you save money on car insurance is just part of the service you get from State Farm Agent Jack Traffinstead. Whether an accident or a simple question, Jack and his staff get you the help you need. And that's the value only a State Farm agent can provide. Call Jack Trapp instead today. 40 million drivers already know. Nobody gives more discounts to more drivers than State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Folks, welcome back. In our first segment tonight, we're going to be talking with a longtime friend of mine in the coaching business and a very successful coach, I might add. And of course, we're talking about Keith Etheridge out at Leeds High School. Coach, uh, always good to see you. Great to see you, Snap. But for people that might be seeing you for the first time, I know your background a little bit. They won't know. Tell us about your background, <laughs> how you got to Leeds. Well, I was a head basketball coach at Irwin for four years. Um, and I had a chance to go home. I'm from Leeds originally. Took an assistant's job there in 2006, I mean 2004. Uh, was an assistant for two years, got the head job in 2006, and been there ever since. It's my ninth season. So. Yeah, I'm telling you, as the old saying goes, time flies when Absolutely. you're having fun. Well, and we were having a lot of success, and, and you and I were just talking about it off the air. What a successful program you've had. And, and I realize, I've been in this business long enough, it takes a combination. It takes good coaching and good kids. Yes, and you get that combination. You get the coaches that want the best out of the kids, the kids that want to be the best and right. listen to the coach and do what they say. 
and, and, and you can get the best out of all of you. Right. And, and in your case, it's been a winning tradition. This year's team, very successful thus right. far, only one loss. Yes, sir. But as we get toward the end of the um, season, the playoffs right around the corner, talk about the expectations that you had for this team at the beginning of the season, both from the aspect of the offensive side of the ball, right. defensive, and your special teams. Uh, I think, you know, we start every year off wanting to go 15-0 and win a state championship. That's what we talk about every every year. Uh, we we drop one, so our, our goal now is 14-1 and win a state championship. Offensively, we've got as talented a group as we've had in a long time. Um, we've got a quarterback who's a, who's a dual threat. We've got two great running backs, you know, we've got a great offensive line and got some good receivers, you know. So we've got we've got the total package on offense, and we're – we're doing a good job. Of, we're averaging about 400 yards a game, you know, so our kids are doing a great job rolling it up on offense, and we got a great defense, too. Defensively, that's what we've always hung our hat on at Leeds, playing good defense. And um, I don't think we've given up 1,000 yards rushing or, or passing, you know, so I think we're at right at 1,400, 1,500 total yards of offense is what we're giving up on wow. the, in nine games. So that's pretty good, you know, and I'm proud of these guys. They, you know, They've done a fantastic job, and I got a great coaching staff. And you know, if you if you have those those things, and you got a, a great community that that supports you, you know, all those things work together, and you know, it turns into a successful program. Well, you know, you made a very good point, Coach. That uh, people don't realize a lot of times how important even a high school coach's staff is to him. Right. If he can keep it together a right. while, you grow with a continuity, everybody knows what's expected out of them. Right. The kids going through the program aren't uh, dealing with different coaches right. every year. So uh, you can't undermine how important that coaching staff is, right? Absolutely, I've got a fantastic coaching staff. I think we've lost four coaches in the nine years I've been there. So same guys, you know, that we understand each other, we get along, you know, we may go at each other in the coach's office, but once we walk out that door, we're all on the same page and we're in it for the betterment of the kids and, and, and to get the kids on the same page and win football games. Now, you talked about your offense and your defense a minute ago. Uh, do you have many kids that have to play both ways on the Oh, we have, we have football? a couple. We have a couple. You know, uh, one of them that will be up here tonight is Tyler Wright. D'Angelo Webster plays both ways. Um, you know, we have Mike Rankins who plays both ways. He's an offensive lineman, plays some linebacker, defensive line. Uh, James Stevens is another kid that plays both ways. So we have about four, but we spell them. You know, right, we, right. we can go to a two-back system and, and rest our fullback. Um, we can go to a spread system and, and rest, you know, some, some of the guys that, like our tight end. So, you know, we do a, our, our coaches do a great job of, of getting those guys you know, some rest and, and then getting them back in the game where they're going to be successful. Well, I know this year too, Coach, uh, and, and uh, the fact that you have to play no more than that really helps right. you out as well. Uh, you go into a, a new region, new classification. Right. Talk about that, what it's meant to you as far as the teams you're playing and some of the traveling problems it has or has uh, not caused. Yeah, traveling's been, hmm. been brutal for us because, you know, I think our closest game is about – an hour and 20, hour and 30 minutes away that we're traveling to. So, um, you know, our region's spread out a little bit. So, you know, but but the competition's been great this year. You know, we talked about at the first of the year. You know, our first seven games, we played six ranked teams. You know, so so that, that competition level was unbelievable. And I think it raised our kids' bar, and, and, and they did a fantastic job. Played, got to play on ESPN the first game of the year, play Madison Academy which was a repeat of the state championship game from the year before. And we got to get a little redemption. You know, we got a win in that one. Kids played great and the community, community came out and supported them. And it, it was just a great experience. Well, I know uh, I don't want time to get away before I ask this next question because you touched on your, your children right. uh, a, a few moments ago. Uh, I try to tell people all the time, <laughs> behind every good coach, there's a great coach's wife. Absolutely. Talk about your wife and your family just a second. Um, wife Allison we've been married for 14 years you know um, got a little boy who's 12 got a little girl who's seven so you know uh, Mackenzie's seven Camden's 12 so um, or he's fixing to turn 12 um, you know and, and my wife's great she's a great coach's wife she understands she's she's one of those uh, coaches wives who who loves the kids that I coach you know and she treats them like they're hers you know it's, it's she's amazing 
She is great. Well, I, and I know a lot of times we forget to say that and talk about them sometimes, <laughs> but how important they are to you and Absolutely. your kids and your program. Uh, another thing that's very important, and you touched on it just a little bit, I want you to go into it a little more, mm -hmm. is the relationship you have with the community there right. and the support you get, not only from them, but faculty and all. It makes yeah. your job so much easier, doesn't it? Absolutely. You know, our principal's Mike Turner. Michael Turner, and uh, he's a he's an ex-coach, state championship basketball coach. So um, he understands what it, what it's like, you know. And he he does a fantastic job of supporting us, you know, the community. I'm from that community, so a lot of the guys that I play with in high school, I'm coaching their kids right now, you know. So it's one of them things that you know I, I'm real comfortable there. I know everybody. Everybody knows me. They know what I stand for. They know what what this program's about, and you know, they do a. You know, it's it's just overwhelming the support we get from the community. Coach, we just got about a minute left in this segment. One thing I want you to touch on, talk about from a coach's perspective how challenging it is to get your teams year after year to play at the level they do. Uh, it's tough. You know, it, I, I tell them all the time, it, I think it's a little easier to get to the top of the mountain, a little harder to stay there, you know. And our kids have done a great job buying in. You know, we do the same thing we did nine years ago. You know, I think uh, we play this week for the region championship. We win this game, we win the region, and then the first round of the playoffs we'll play, and we'll be playing for our 100th win in the last nine years, you know, over a nine-year span. So um, that's a testament to the guys that I've coached and the guy that I co guys that I coach with. Well, I tell you what, it looks like you guys are on track to do something special again, or at least have an opportunity to. Yes, Always good to see you. Thank you. Good luck to you the rest of the season and uh, in the future as well. I appreciate you, Steph. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be visiting with some of the gentlemen that has made this a special season thus far for me. If you want to personalize that special vehicle you drive, whether it be a car, SUV, or that truck that you love so much, then you need to visit the Drive Shop. They're located between downtown Trussville and Deerfoot Parkway on Highway 11, where their fine service staff of professionals are waiting to serve you. The services include auto systems, security and remote start systems, tires and wheels, and window tinting, just to name a few. So come by and visit them today or find them online at thedriveshop.com or visit us on the Facebook. That's the Drive Shop in Trustful, 533-8785. Also, if you mention Snapper's name, you receive a 10% discount. Are you sure we should take this billboard down? People find out State Farm does car loans as well as they do insurance. Our bank is through. Good point. Grab an edge. Look, there's two guys on the State Farm Borrow Better banking sign. No, for real, there's two dudes on the State Farm Borrow Better banking sign. Gentlemen, please get down from the State Farm Borrow Better banking sign. Bill, get the hose. Okay, he's getting the hose. All right, let's go. Want to borrow better? Contact State Farm agent Thomas Waters about a car loan that can save you hundreds. The community features a world-class resort and spa, the amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course, miles of historic trails, and the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, are we gonna have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. And folks, welcome back in this segment. As you can see, I'm uh, surrounded by four outstanding <laughs> athletes from the Lead Green Wave. Before we get started, I want to remind you, once again, you can pick up our show on the internet at castvshow.com, and please like us on Facebook. Um, we appreciate it, and uh, you know, if you get a chance, look us up. In this segment, we're visiting with four athletes that have had a very outstanding season thus far. And to start with, we've got uh, Tadaro Marshall, Jr., the quarterback. Yes, uh, next to me, Trey Nation. Over here, Trey's a junior, running back. 
behind me here, Tyler Wright, he's a senior running back linebacker, dual threat, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, D'Angelo Webster over here, he's a senior linebacker fullback. Guys, good to have you all. As we start this segment off, first we'll start with you, Tadaro. For being a, a junior, um, how many years have you been starting a quarterback, or is this the first year? Uh, this I've been starting since my freshman year. Really? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, going into this year, did you think that uh, you and your teammates were going to have the, the, the team chemistry, the, the kind of team you ought to have to get you as far as you've gotten this year? Yes, sir. It, from my freshman year all the way to my junior year, we've been going to a lot of camps together, a lot of passing camps. So the passing chemistry, the, the uh, check downs, all that other stuff, it's, it's progressed from my freshman year to this year. Well, good. And, of course, that's given you experience as well as your teammates as well, right? Yes, sir. And then Trey, um, junior running back, um, if, if you could be like any running back, pro or college, if your game could be like that, other than want to be Trey Nation, who would you want to be? Todd Gurley. Really? Is the it? Georgia running back. <laughs> well, the one thing you don't want to do is get in trouble like he did. But what a, he, he's an outstanding runner, isn't he? Uh, going into this year, one of the things that we talk with kids a lot about is team chemistry. And I know you guys have been playing together a pretty good bit. And chemistry is so important for the simple reason the, the more you like one another, the better you get along, the better you can maximize y'all's abilities, not only as individuals, there's this team. So talk about that, the team chemistry and, and how it has worked for you guys. Well, um, my ninth grade year, I was kind of playing with most the linemen and the wide receivers, like Jacoby Lockhart, he was the slot, and Jeremy and Izzy, they were the tackles. So that really hasn't changed, and then well, before I came to Leeds, I was playing with Michael Rankins, um, Joe, and James, and it's really been the same for real. So I've been playing with the same people, and so we for get me, along. for me, Arity is good, isn't it? It makes you it makes you feel comfortable, of course. And if you like one another, that helps even more, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, uh, Tyler, uh, going into this year, you as a senior. So you've uh, been on a lot of successful teams. Talk about what the expectations are for you and, and for your teammates as you go from year to year. And you're a senior now. What did you expect out of yourself and your teammates? I expect that my teammates, everybody just work together and play hard and uh, keep, just keep moving, move on past the loss and just keep uh, going for the <laughs> – <laughs> Just, just look ahead, look ahead, and um, keep our head, keep our heads right. Uh, make good grades, and, and just. Well, you know, you you made a good point there, because the good grades is definitely a part of it. Because I tell athletes all the time, if you don't qualify in the classroom, you don't make it to the football field, the basketball court, or whatever. So that's very important. And not letting a loss get you down is just as important. You got to bounce back, right? Yes, okay, um, D'Angelo, how about you? Now you're a linebacker, fullback which means do you play both ways? Yes, All right, which do you prefer? Do you like to run the ball and run over people or do you like to, <laughs> <laughs> to clown them king for a day when you get a good shot on them? Oh, mostly I like defense. Do better. you? Yes, because I like to, you know, be the one to hit somebody. And it be legal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, you know what I tell you, I don't know how coach dresses this, but most coaches do. They will tell you defense wins games. And what we mean by that is, you know, if the score is nothing, nothing, all you got to do is score and win. But if your defense is letting people pile it up on you, it puts you, the whole team behind, doesn't it? So I guess you and your teammates, you take pride in your defense, right? What did you expect for yourself as well, as well as the team as this year started, knowing that uh, one is going to be your last year? <laughs> well, you know, our defense, like, we prepare ourselves every week. You know, we got our coaches, Coach Burnett and Coach Reese and Coach Shell. They they help us get better at what we do. You know, and our teammates, well, my teammates, they help. Like, they they do what they're supposed to do. You know, and they don't let they don't let each other down. So you know. Well, I tell you what, um, we're talking about doing what you're supposed to do. Uh, to Daryl, there's a lot of um, you could put say pressure if you want to, but one of the most important positions on the football team is quarterback. Let's talk about your game for a minute. Um, are you a running threat, or do you like to throw more? 
or do you like to put pressure on both sides of the defense to stop the run and the throw? I like to put pressure on both sides, you know, with the running and the throwing. Because I know in Little League, I played running back majority of the time. And when I came to Leeds, I started playing baseball. And after they saw my arm and how strong it was, they started putting me at quarterback in middle school. And working my way up from my eighth grade year in middle school to my junior year now, my arm and my accuracy has gotten a lot better. So that way I can do both ways with the uh, throwing and the running. So it's like I got the best of both, both worlds right now, you know? Well, you having said that, it leads me to the next question. I would be curious as to who, you, what quarterback you look at and say, gosh, that's, that's the way I want my game to be, whether it be a college or professional, who would it be? Well, in college, well, now professional, I like RG3, right, because of his accuracy. But my moves and stuff, kind of watch Johnny Manziel with the backer spin out the pocket, you know, the throwing off one foot to go to a, a open receiver downfield. Uh, you know, just those two guys, I look at their highlight film once, like, every other night just to see, like, which move I could try and pick up. It's just the little stuff. Well, it sounds like you like to study to be the best you can be at what your position is. Trey, um, having said that, who do you enjoy playing at home or on the road more? And here's why I ask that question. I've had a lot of athletes tell me they enjoy playing on the road because it's like the pressure is off. Like at home, everybody expects you to do better. But, and, and sometimes home cooking is what everybody wants. So from that aspect, how do you feel about it? I like playing on the road more because you know you're coming in with the crowd expecting you to lose. And then you send them, well, we go home and mm -hmm. they're upset. <laughs> well, that sounds like you feel pretty comfortable playing on the road. Uh, how about you, um, Tyler? Do you prefer, does it matter to you where you play, or do you prefer one over another? I it really don't matter to me. <laughs> you just want to line up and get, to, get it done, right? Yes, how about you, D'Angelo? I'm just saying, either, either way, it doesn't matter. I'm going to still bring my A game. <laughs> well, I, I, I can imagine that. Uh, guys, uh, another question I would like to ask is from Morning till night, when you get to school, how, what is your day like for an athlete and a football player in particular, when you get to school in the morning to the time that you go home after practice? And we'll start with you, Tadaro. Well, in the morning we have first period athletics. That's like all the football players. So that's, that, that class is pretty crazy, you know, because after stays in his office, you don't want to deal with us in first period. <laughs> uh, second period through fifth period, that's when everybody got lunch. And that's when we just we just kick back, you know. Everybody have fun. We talk about what, what's going on during the game, who gonna do what, who gonna show out, who not, you know. Just, you know, talk trash to the players like everybody else does. And when we get to practice, it's nothing but trash talk. Everybody trying to get in everybody's head, trying to get better at the same time. You know, Coach Shell getting mad. <laughs> Coach Reese getting mad at Coach Shell. Coach Jethro's getting mad at everybody it else. It sounds like y'all need a psychiatrist <laughs> out there when y'all are practicing. I mean, yeah, it's just fun because it's practice. You know, we're going over what we're supposed to do. Uh, everybody everybody is pretty much down packed with what this stuff that we're doing. The scout team does great. We got Coach Higgs, Coach Williams, who don't really say much, but you'll see them back there cracking up every once in a while. Yeah, it's fun to practice, you know. Well, now, it's uh, neat that you say that because, Trey, I've heard a lot of people, don't, a lot of athletes, and some in particular, don't think much of practice. Now, practice is an important part. How do you approach it, and wh how, what does it mean to you? Is it a time that you know you can make yourself get better, or is it one of those times you want to slack off a little bit and then say, I'll go all out? I, although I can't imagine you doing that under this coach, but, but talk about that from your aspect. Well, I kind of look forward to going to practice every day just for the simple fact that I'm getting better. And then I also like lining up against the scout team, see what, because our coaches, they watch a lot of film and they prepare us for what's going to be in the next game. So us going against the scout team is like us going against the next opponent we'll, we'll, we will face. So I like lining up against the scout team and going hard. And like, and then I line up for the defense and go scout team. Yeah, y'all, it sounds like y'all enjoy yourself. Uh, Tyler, how, what would you, you being a senior, what, what do you hope to do um, this year? Do you hope to go to college somewhere, play football, or just go to study? And if you do, where would you like to go? 
I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to going to college and play football, but uh, right now I don't know where he is. Okay. What kind of, what, if you don't make as a professional football player, what would you like to do one day? I'd like to be a um, physical trainer. Really? Okay, stay in sports then. Yes, yeah. Okay, how about you, D'Angelo? Where would you like to go from being a senior? Uh, I would like to go to college, but I don't know where yet. But. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, listen, guys, this is one answer I want you to get real quick. We've got less than a minute. To this point in your life, who's been the most inspirational person or persons? Coach, man. Coach Anthony. Coach, okay. That sounds good and quick. How about you, Trey? Coach Anthony. Coach? Coach Anthony. Hey, now that's a, that's a boy. He, he knows he's got to go home. And how about you, Dean? My mother, yeah. my dad, Coach Etheridge, and Coach Burnett. Well, <laughs> well, I tell you what, guys, y'all been a delightful group to have. You've had a good season thus far. You got had that one loss left a bad taste in your mouth, right? Yes, we don't sir. know more of that, okay? As Coach Dunn said, 14-1. If y'all go 14-1, we'll come out and I'll have y'all back and we'll celebrate, okay? I got you. But listen, good luck to you guys the rest of the way and good luck to you two guys being a senior, okay, when you get off to college. Folks, we're going to take a quick break. We're coming right back. Don't you go away. Land of Frost Premium is America's best-selling one-pound daily pouch. Now available in 12 delicious flavors, including new flavors of muskeet turkey and cotto salami. High school athletes across the country ask for Land of Frost by name. These great items are available at your local grocer, including Piggly Wiggly, Food Giant, Western Supermarkets, and many more. Land of Frost also makes other varieties of lunch meats, including daily shaved bristro and sub sandwich kits. Land of Frost is a proud sponsor of youth sports as well. And this will be your premium right here. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say I combined home and auto with State Farm. Saved 760 bucks. Love this guy. Okay, does it bother anybody else that the mime is talking? Freaky. Bundle home and auto, and you could save 760 bucks. That's 760 very good reasons to call Alan Gurdow in Trustville today. The community features a world-class resort and spa. The amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course. Miles of historic trails. And the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, are we going to have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. And folks, welcome back. And in this segment, we're visiting one of my favorite gentlemen in the coaching business. Of course, we're talking about Chris Yeager, the outstanding coach for many years at Mountain Brook High School. Coach, always good to see you. Good to be here, Snap. And uh, what I would like you to do for folks that may be watching you for the first time, tell us a little bit about your background and how you ended up being the head coach there at Mountain Brook. Okay, um, I was, gosh, I coached 10 years in college. I was at, uh, University of North Alabama, Austin P. State, East Tennessee State, Alabama, uh, all over the place. And, but I've always had a passion, wanted to coach in high school. Started out at West Blockton High School, was at Walker High School, and went to Georgia for years and um, had a relationship with Joey Jones. And um, he offered me a job at, uh, at Mountain Brook. Turned him down a couple of times and he just, he said, if you'll just come over and talk to me. And so I uh, traveled to Mountain Brook and met the kids, just fell in love with them. You know, just, boy, really impressed with the kids. and. Called my wife and said, we're going to Mountain Brook. So I was um, eight years, uh, seven years, Joey's offensive coordinator. And when Joey went to Birmingham Southern, became the head football coach. Well, I know it seems like I've been dealing with you for years, and it's been a, a very enjoyable relationship, I might add, too. Coach, talking about this year's team in particular, talk with the kids about it. Uh, a little bit do, do, from the offensive and defensive side of the football. Talk about this year's team, the special teams, and what you had coming into this year. Well, I mean, going back to the very beginning, you know, we're the 
we're the there's 32 teams in 7A, and we're number 32, um, and we really like that. You know, we really that's uh, you know we we like being the smallest and uh, chip, you know, a little chip on the shoulder, just a little bit, you know. Uh, but anyway, in the uh, you know we go through the the uh, spring practice, and we have one of our uh, top players, Andrew Autry. You know, Andrew's his knee in a non-contact drill in spring training. Uh, you know, Andrew's um, he's a baseball signee for Auburn and uh, unbelievable athlete. And um, you know, Stephen uh, Little uh, was one of our top receivers. We moved him to defensive back, and uh, you know, we just cruise right along. And then uh, you know, getting the second game of the year, Joe Donald gets injured. He's our you know our Mike linebacker, and you know, we have a lot of situations like that. You think, you know, golly, how many different hits can this team take? But you know, we played the first game of the year. Uh, you know, we lost on the last second field goal. We've uh, uh, we've lost two games on the last second field goal, and then, and then one within. We lost a, a game in the last uh, few seconds of, of the game, and, but we won one in double overtime. But you know, we've had a lot of games that have come down to the wire. Uh, the team, the thing I'm most proud of the team is they've competed to the very end. You know, we always talk about finishing and giving it your best effort, and I just love the physical effort. You know, and the passion that these young men have for the game of football. Um, love the have they have a passion for practice too, you know, um, and so they've been really really enjoyable uh, to be around. I haven't, you know, a lot of people ask about our record and stuff like that, and I don't think a whole lot about the record, uh, but I do think a lot about you know the the adversity that the players have come through, and you know we've still got a shot to be in the playoffs, and so we're excited about that. And uh, but anyway, it's been a been a great group of guys to be around. But you know, coach, with you attacking that question like that and answering it that way, sometimes the biggest challenges that you have, obstacles, if you will, bring out the best not only in you and your coaching staff, but your kids as well. Talk, talk about that because that has to be special. A lot of times, uh, if if not a whole bunch is expected out of you, you don't get much. Yeah. But it's you get out of what you and your coaches and your young athletes put into it. And it sounds like this year y'all have grown in more ways than just on the football field. Well, one of the things I love most about Mountain Brook, uh, of the many things I love about Mountain Brook, but, you know, we, you know, every year, you know, we don't have a system that we say, okay, uh, we're going to plug this player in here and we're looking for this kind of player. We really take the kind of players that we have and try and build our system, you know, as we go. And that's been a fun, I mean, it's been a real, a real fun uh, journey. And, um, you know the thing that, to me, that uh, you know that that makes that that special is that each player is unique. You know, and sometimes you know there will be a player that will have a um, excuse me a team that will have a special athlete and uh, you know a guy that's big, strong, fast, all those kind of things. And sometimes we may have to take two players to build an athlete like that and do a lot of personnel packages. But the thing that it's done to me, uh, I've, the way that I've grown. You know, you always search for answers, and every time you try to plug your players into a system and create your system as you go, you always learn. You know, and uh, we're in a great region with great coaches and great teams. And the thing that's awesome about that's challenging. Learned a lot from the coaches that we've coached against. You know, and teams that we've played against. It seems like every week, but it's uh, you know that part's been real fun. Well, I tell you what, you've uh, been in the coaching business a long time, and you've seen it at different levels, and it and it seems like that. Uh, from the outward appearance anyway, you found your niche or where you need to be there at Mountain Brook. It seems like it's really working for both you, the community, and the players. Well, I like it. I don't know. I hope it's working for the, mm -hmm. the players in the community, but I really like it. You know, the thing, the, the, uh, we've got very intelligent young men, and we've got, you know, uh, players with high goals and very motivated and come from, you know, very motivated parents. You know, they come to our program. They know how to succeed. I mean, they're trained for success at a very young age. And so when they come into our program, you know, we just have to sort of plug them in and get them going in the right direction as far as what we want to do, you know, from a football standpoint, it sort of takes care of itself. Well, I'm going to enjoy this next question because it's going to be, uh, I'm going to enjoy listening to you answer it. But there's an old saying, you've been coaching a long time, but every, uh, behind every good coach, there's a good coach's wife. I want you to talk about your wife and your family a few minutes because I know that support group okay. is very, very important. Okay, I, I married my high school sweetheart. Actually, I married my junior high school sweetheart. We met each other in the eighth grade at a uh, fall festival. And uh, it was love at first sight for me. I had to win her over, it took quite a while. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, Elaine, my wife, she's, uh, I mean, my, she's just uh, the uh, unbelievable coach's wife. You know, she doesn't miss, she, she doesn't miss anything. I can remember when she was expecting with my oldest son, she was uh, 
eight months pregnant, she was filming from a tower uh, practice. And so anyway, she's been that kind of wife and she's behind the scenes, just wonderful. Um, you know, I've got three unbelievable boys and they've been, you know, closely involved and they've loved sports along the way. And, uh, uh, but anyway, it's been, it's been a family, a family journey. And so it's been, been a lot of fun. Well, I tell you what, Coach, we got just uh, under a minute here left. Uh, uh, talk about the fact that here this late in the season, maybe you've had a lot of obstacles and everything, but there the playoff spot is there for the taking. Yeah. And do you feel like your guys are peaking, if that's the right word to use, at the right time to be ready for this challenge? Well, that's a great question, Snapper. And, you know, that's what it takes, you know, to, to keep playing. Um, at this time of the year, you know, the, there's a, a lot of parity in our region right now. There's a lot of teams – uh, you know, there's two teams that separated themselves, you know, Hoover and Oak Mountain, they've separated themselves. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of us with three wins in the region, you know, and there's a, you know, it's going to be decided probably the 10th week of the season, the, the, the clear playoff picture. But, um, you know, it's great that here we are in week nine and we still have control of our destiny. And that's all you want. I mean, you're, it's just a horse race and you're jockeying for position. That's what we want. Coach, good luck to you. As long as you don't have to beat Best Avia, which you've already <laughs> done. But good luck to you and your kids and uh, for the rest of the season. Thanks, Matt. And folks, we'll take a quick break. We're coming right back. The community features a world-class resort and spa. The amazing Robert Trent Jones Trail Golf Course. Miles of historic trails. And the whole family loves the pool at Ross Park. Now, are we going to have to watch your vacation slides all night? This was supposed to be a party. Well, this isn't my vacation. I live here. Ooh. And this will be your premium right here. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say I combined home and auto with State Farm. Saved 760 bucks. Love this guy. Okay. Does it bother anybody else that the mime is talking? Freaky. Bundle home and auto and you could save 760 bucks. That's 760 very good reasons to call Ted Townley in Homewood today. The Drive Shop in Trustful not only personalizes cars, SUVs, and trucks, they can personalize your motorcycle or ATV as well. They also specialize in automotive accessories to fit your specification. They provide performance and fuel economy upgrades, lift kits, off-road accessories, custom lighting, bed liners, and much more. Once again, that's the Drive Shop located just north of downtown Trustful on Highway 11. They're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., and on Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The number to call, 533-8785 or visit us online at thedriveshop.com or like us on Facebook. Don't forget, you'll receive a 10% discount if you mention Snapper's name. And folks, welcome back in this segment. As you can tell, I'm visiting with three of the young, outstanding young athletes from the Mountain Brook Spartans. And before we get started, I want to tell you once again that to see our program on the internet, go to castvshow.com or like us on Facebook. Uh, we look forward to you doing that and hope you'll do it soon. Uh, right now we're going to visit with these three athletes sitting closest to me. All three of these young gentlemen are seniors and we're talking about Stephen Little, senior defensive back. Yes, sir. Um, Wilkerson Anthony, a senior wide receiver. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, Reed Pyburn, a senior offensive lineman. Right? Yes, sir. All right, guys, going into this season, first of all, we'll start with you, Stephen. Being a senior, <coughs> Uh, is, is football the only sport you participate in? Yes, sir. I've, I'm kind of I'm in the rec league basketball and church league basketball, but football is the only high school sports uh, that I'm in that I'm in right now. Well, I tell you what, those rec league sports will keep you in shape too, Absolutely. playing that basketball. <laughs> well, uh, Stephen, going into this season, uh, what did you as a player expect out of this team? Do you think that you're about where you thought you would be, or? Do you feel like you've played a little better, or as a team, you, you still feel like you have a little ways to go? I mean, with two games left, we definitely have a way to go. I mean, this game Friday versus Spain Park kind of determines if we extend the season. Um, we thought we'd be going further uh, with our wins at this point in the season, but, I mean, we've, we've gotten where we, we are now, and we just got to make up for it. Okay, uh, Wilson, um, how about you being a, a senior? Uh, talk about 
First of all, do you participate in any other sports? Uh, yes, sir. I like to play basketball, like Stephen said, and I like to play golf, kind of, oh, in the okay. summer and all that, so. All right, now you guys have been around the program for a while. Yes, sir. Um, does, it, does it surprise you that where you are, or do you feel like y'all have the capability of finishing strong and, and being in the playoffs? Uh, yes, sir, definitely. I mean, most of our losses this season have come at the very end of the game, so we could easily be just that other team. You know, they swung the other way for us, but, I mean, I feel like, we just got to take care of business these last two games, and I think we can get in the playoffs a strong team. Okay, Reed, um, senior offensive lineman. Yes, sir. Uh, has this season surprised you in any way, or do you feel like, well, as, you, as long as you're doing the best you can, and I know all you guys are, it is, what's that old saying, it is what it is. Yes, sir. But you still got a chance to be in the playoffs, and that's what everybody wants. Do you want the number one seed? Absolutely. But it don't always work out that way. Well, with that thought in mind, are you sort of, your team sort of where you thought you might be, just having a chance to do something good? Um, <clears throat> I think our team is definitely where I thought we'd be effort-wise. I mean, we really put in a lot of work in practice and in games. You know, like these guys have said, it just comes down to that last-minute field goal. Uh, and, you know, we could just as easily be that other team. And, you know, I like where we're at. And I think, you know, going into these last two games, we're pretty confident we're going to, you know, put our best foot forward. Okay. Well, everybody likes to finish on, on a strong note. Yes, and the yes, fact sir. that you've got that possibility of a playoff spot looming out there is that much more incentive to be the best you can be. And talking about that, um, Stephen, one of the things I think the makeup of a team that is so important is team chemistry. Uh, you can have some good athletes, but if you're not good friends or don't get along or, or aren't team oriented, you cannot um, mastermind or, or ma be as good as you can possibly be. Yes, sir. Uh, talk about the team chemistry on y'all's team and how you feel like y'all play together. I can speak for the senior class. Uh, these two guys sitting beside me, I grew up with them, played ball with them all through these years. Um, this, this class of 15 is just so tight-knit. Um, some of my best friends on this football team. I mean, that, that puts in like practice, weightlifting, sprinting. I mean, we're all together <coughs> when we do those things. Um, as for the younger guys, we're trying to kind of take them in. We've had our, our, uh, our lessons learned this year with the young guys, just trying to bring them in and keep them involved in the team because Nobody wants to be left out. Nobody wants to be the, the outcast on a football team. That's going to help with practice. It's going to help with classroom stuff, everything else. Well, good. Uh, Wilkerson, one question I'd like to ask. How long have you been playing football? Uh, I've been playing since the third grade. Yes, and so yeah, you've been at Mountain Brook all these so. years, right? Mm -hmm. Talk about, and I, I hate to put you on the spot like this, but talk about what it's been like playing for that big, bad Coach Jaeger. Uh, yes, sir. I mean, yeah, I mean, he really demands a lot out of his players, and uh, you know, he makes us better. Just not as better football players, better people, and better pre uh, men. Like the most important thing is we get all with lessons. That's what he always tells us. That uh, at the end of the day, we always just got to be better people out of it. And um, uh, Reed, one one question I'd like to ask you because. Um, uh, we have some offensive linemen on here, and you get some pretty varying answers, um, whether it be a collegiate player or a professional player. If you could model your game after any one player, who would it be and say, that's, that's the way I want my game to be like? Oh, man, that's a, that's a tough question. Um, I, I mean, I really don't know who I'd be able to model it by. I mean. I don't. I really you, well, let me you. ask you this. This will maybe simplify it a little bit. Are you an Alabama or Auburn fan? Uh, I'm an Auburn fan. I'll pray for you. No, no, <laughs> no, I don't mean that. But is there an Auburn lineman that, that you think, golly, I wish my game could, I could get up to that level? Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I admire like all guys at collegiate level, really. I mean, I admire the work that they put in, and you know, all the time that they put into practice and all the film and work that they do in, in the weight room and on the field. So right. I mean, really, just anybody at that level, I'd have a lot of admiration for. Well, now, one thing about it, you guys all being seniors, I can ask you this question that will uh, apply to all of you. Uh, and we'll start with you, Reed. Being a senior, uh, let's say you, you may get a scholarship somewhere. We do not know that. But let's say if you could go to any college you wanted to, where would you go and what kind of courses <coughs> would you take? What would you like to prepare for? Um, I'm kind of a smaller college 
guy myself, so I'm looking at a few places right now, but I'd probably go, you know, somewhere small and I don't know really what I'd study. I kind of, I'm into science, so I'd probably take that kind of route or business type of route. Uh, having said that, let me interject this one little question. Have you ever thought about maybe coaching one day? Uh, it's, it's, you know, come across my mind, but I don't it know. It left real quick. <laughs> yeah. Now, know. coaching, a coach will tell you this, <laughs> coaching's not for everybody. Yeah. But, I mean, it, if you love it, you know it, you know it, if, if it's for yes, you sir. or not. Wilkerson, how, what about you? Um, with the colleges? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sir, I have a couple just in mind. And uh, wherever I got, I kind of like to do something like economics and something like that, the stock market. That's oh, pretty okay. interesting to me. Yes, you want to handle the athlete's money yes, sir. Yeah, and, and help them <laughs> yes, with sir. it and not <laughs> pound away at the pro level, huh? Okay. Yes, how about you, uh, <laughs> Stephen? Um, interested in some sort of business school or uh, building science. I, I'm interested in construction, so I'm uh, still weighing my options. Might be a game time decision yeah, on well, college. Oh, that's I like the way you said that, game time decision. Uh, let me ask you this, um, uh, the new region, uh, how many change, were there a lot of changes for you guys, just or a few teams? Yes, sir, I mean, we, from day one in the off season, we, we saw these big, bad names on our schedule, just big old teams. Uh, and, but we didn't really take a different approach to them. We, we knew what we had to do. Um, just prepare, prepare like we prepare every week for the last two years that I've been here. It hasn't really been different. We just knew that there were different teams we were playing. Uh, how about you, uh, Wilkerson? Uh, is, is there any team that you looked forward to more than ever? Or did you see some teams on there? Golly, I look forward to playing that, that team. Uh, yes, sir, definitely. I mean, just we hadn't played Hoover for two years. It was pretty exciting just to be able to go play, go play them over in the Met. And always, of course, just seeing Vestavia on the schedule. I've been looking forward to playing them my senior year for a while. Yeah, well, I used to look forward to seeing y'all, too. <laughs> but I, and I tell you, I definitely didn't enjoy my trip to the mail. <laughs> uh, how about you? Uh, uh, yeah, you? I mean, I w I'd say that we prepared the same as we always have for these teams. You know, it's just another name on the schedule. And uh, I definitely look, f look forward to playing Vestavia and really every other team because, you know, it's a different region, different guys every year. But, you know, I definitely looked forward to playing Vestavia. Uh, I asked these guys that were up here before y'all, I'm going to ask y'all the same thing. What is a normal school day like for y'all? How early does it start and what are you doing? And then when it ends um, after practice, what kind of day, what have you experienced all through that day? We'll start with you. Um, just wake up, go to school normally, get a walk through for a second period, go throughout the day, usually stop by the field house, bring Coach Eggers mail. Uh, and then go to practice. Sometimes we get a little film or an extra walkthrough afterwards. And then I, I usually stay around the field house for a while and then uh, head home. And Wilson, the one thing I'm looking for more than anything else too, along with what you're doing, what, how, does, how early does it start? Uh, when do you have to be at school? I usually get to school around, around 7.30. Kind of like to go to lunchroom, just kind of hang out for a little bit, get some food and get the day going. Well, y'all don't uh, y'all don't have to do anything football wise real early, do you? Uh, no, sir. And not unless we're like starting have a late start of school, come in, get a workout in or something. But on a normal day, no, sir. Okay. Now, how about you? Um, <coughs> Normally sitting down in English class around 7:55, trying not to be late in the morning. Um, and then we defense is class is third period, so it's not too early in the morning. We're awake at that time. And then, like Reed said, we're we're hitting at eighth period on the turf, so that's our day. Well, I tell you what, both, uh, guys, we only got a little over a minute. One of the questions I really enjoy asking, especially seniors, is to this point in your young life, who's been the most inspirational person or persons? And we'll, we'll start with you, Stephen. I'd say my dad has been the most in inspirational person, um, whether it be work ethic or faith or anything else, he's always there for me. Uh, Waking up, he's the first man I see, and biggest impact in my life. Okay. How about you, Wilson? Uh, I'd say the same thing, Stephen. Definitely both my parents and probably both my older brothers. You know, just they all kind of lead by example for me and just kind of teach me how the man I need to be in my life. How about you, Reed? Uh, I'd have to say my dad as well. Uh, you know, he's taught me a lot, definitely through faith and you know becoming a man. And you know, I, I owe a lot to him. 
Well, I tell you what, guys, uh, you, you all control your destiny, so good luck the rest of the way, okay? You. And Thank folks, you. Uh, you know what Snapper always says, same time, same place. Till next week, bye, sequence.